Grievance, Gordy Show. G -g 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 Grievance, Gordy Show. G -g 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 Grievance, Gordy Show. <laughs> Don't you know? That's right. Coming at you nearly every single day, if I can. Yesterday, I saw a naked girl on Santa Monica Boulevard. <laughs> She was walking naked because it was the start of Pride week or month. <clears throat> but today was the day it started, or possibly, you know, last night. But like, it was like three in the afternoon and she's just walking down the street naked. So this is part of the culture creation. I can clearly see this from the hippies of the 1960s only today it's called DEI um, diversity equity and inclusion and the equity just means that there's money involved um, I know equity one of the terms is it means people are equal I get that I understand that you can see how terrible and gloomy it is out here but it's the same thing with the culture creators of the uh, 1960s and we could clearly see this um, forcing hippies the <laughs> forcification of folk music uh, by pop artists right that kind of ushered in the 1960s era so by the time it was 1978, 79, I was listening to Kiss. I was 12 years old and I was full of this rock and roll culture. I guess you would just call it rock and roll culture. And um, that's really what I identified with. And it was really funny because I went to school in 1980. I started high school and high school for a kid is a big deal. And it was for me. And I realized it was 1980 and the styles were changing. They were getting... People were wearing peg leg jeans instead of bell bottoms. I was still wearing bell bottoms. And like a lot of the kids were making fun of me because I was lost between these two ages. I think it was very interesting. I talk about it a little bit in my book, Two-Legged Animal. Um, but anyways, you can clearly see. Now take a look at Eminem. Um, I don't listen to rap, by the way. Uh, I listen to punk rock. I was in a punk rock band in Detroit in the 1980s. And don't you ever fucking forget it. Because if you do, I'll never let you. So. Um, you can clearly hear in Eminem's new song that they're carrying over this Fly Like an Eagle. Was it Fly Like an Eagle? Oh, no, Abra Kadabra by Steve Miller Band. So it's just like all these rap and hip hop songs, uh, starting with... Uh, Dipstein, they call him because he was recording everybody having sex. Oh my God, were adults having sex? Oh my, how salacious. Ugh, how stupid. Who cares? Ugh, it's so dumb. Anyway, so you could see that every breath you take, which, you know, started off with the death of uh, Biggie Smalls, okay, who... P. Diddy still profits from. Don't forget, there's about eight different murders and illnesses, uh, including L.B. Shure. Um, people who are in just perfect health are now or, or have deteriorated around him. And it's interesting to see in my own personal life some people that I know who were in such a hurry to run out and uh, get something uh, from the government in 2019. I can see from what I'm hearing, some people's health is deteriorating. So, <clears throat> but anyways, I got the jab to get a job and I can't talk about that because for whatever reason, YouTube won't let me. Don't forget, I'm here on behalf of 23andMe to tell my story and it's the site more interesting than most. Um, and don't forget either that 23andMe is, is out of business. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 23 and me is out of business, guys. Well, what happened? Well, I wanted to know more about my Neanderthal uh, past. They have no money. They're completely wiped clean. But what do they have? They have access to, um, I don't know how many people's DNA. They got my DNA. That's for sure. I was married. I was living in Queens at the time. And I actually messed up the test. I didn't even know how to do it. I had to leave 
uh, New York in order to mail it from Connecticut, which is what we had to do. So, but anyways, that was a lifetime ago. Uh, but you could clearly see how the music industry, and I was talking about that in my last episode, are continuing these old songs and they want them reused again. Why? For the same reason, right? Um, so they could all get paid, right? I think, I'm not sure what the band is, but they they sampled Lou Reed, <laughs> right? <laughs> His big song, Take a Walk on the Wild Side, which, which is based on an, uh, a book that I read years ago. Um, <clears throat> Nelson Elgren is the guy's name. I read a bunch of his short stories. Uh, I used to read a lot more. Now I'm online all the time. But anyways, the band, they had a pretty big hit with it. They didn't get one cent. They don't get any money from it at all. So these hip hop morons are getting talked into using old classic rock songs. that <laughs> They don't get any money. And then the old guys who own the rights to these songs take a look at the day the music died guys uh three people going down in an airplane crash i don't know kind of reminds me of leonard skinner a little bit kind of re reminds me of the left-eyed lopez and all these other people who went down in airplane crashes i think they tried to do the same thing to the drummer of uh blink 182 but i think he lived but anyways i'm not saying airplanes don't crash but i find it interesting that Boeing is going through so many issues, but yet you go to NASA, the live website on YouTube, there's only about 200 people watching it, but they're, they're right now inside something called Boeing Starlink, okay? And so these newspaper articles are to get the stock market to perform volatilely right it's to make the stock market more volatile to make a very specific stock say like bud light say like uh what was it called i always forget the name of the fitness companies they had a guy in the bathroom there and the stock plummeted um and a couple other really big ones when you see these even boeing when you see these huge swaths of the stock just plummeting that causes the entire market to sorry guys i just got up hello uh causes the entire market to become volatile okay and so that's what they're doing they meaning those involved and they want the stock market to crash by next year now i traced this back uh, 17 year intervals in going back to 2008 michael burry put 1.5 billion dollars on the fact that the stock market was going to crash at some point i believe it's going to be next year because i believe it's on a 17 year cycle and i traced this cycle all the way back to the death of the deutsche mark i was wondering why it didn't go to 1929 and here in america 1929 is when the stock market crashed but what people don't understand is that yes it did crash but um, you also have a lot of sensationalization through what was known as media deep blue then. I call it media deep blue. Um, they would call it yellow journalism. Um, so it was like uh, Randolph Hearst when he said, you know, you supply the photographs, I'll supply the war. Okay, so a lot of this stuff is headline driven. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you. What are you emotionally investing in? Are you emotionally investing in, say, the police murder of an individual that you don't even know, who's not even in your family? This, this is the kind of stuff that I can't really wrap my mind around. I have a lot of family problems myself. I, I for years, for about 50 years, I longed to be a part of my family. They've always kind of, whatever reason, ostracized me. And now I made the personal decision to not be a part of their family. I'm not gonna want to be a part of it. I'm not gonna contact them in order to be a part of it. Uh, none of that's gonna happen. <laughs> so uh, it was something that I always wanted. And 
you know, it's okay to allow your loved ones to live in the street, to be homeless, and this kind of stuff. But you're going to get emotionally wrapped up in some news story about something that happened to a person that you never met before. Okay, so this is important stuff and not many people are even talking about it. You know, these people are being used as dupes. These DEI people, they're being, uh, they're utilizing the LGBT community. They're thrusting them to the fore. And then when the stock market crashes, I saw them do this with women. They'll put a woman in, in a position of power. And then when the stock market crashes, it crashes under her watch or the, the company stock, I meant to say. I've seen this happen before at one of the big three in um, Michigan. And I was like, there was not one single newspaper article about the fact that she inherited all this stuff. Okay. She didn't cause uh, the stock to crash. Okay. There's a myriad of factors uh, come to play when it does. You can kind of predict, you know, when it will crash. And that is what these DEI hires are meant to do and what they're doing is something called accelerationism they're they're excelling accelerating us into a future a future that we don't even know what it is yet uh i told you that your smartphone can actually read your hormones that means you are beaming something back to your smartphone that's being registered it's not all just picking things up from you it's actually uh recording i believe way more information than we, we we have a notion to even understand yet and i think um, definitely we're in a medical mafia that's for sure now this started when they said we're all supposed to have health care insurance well when you look at your payroll taxes you know you could see they're taking out plenty of money for all this stuff and um and then in the 90s, they added Obamacare on, on top of it, right? They said, well, we have to pay for these costs for health care. Okay, so all of this stuff has never been around before. This coincides with Rockefeller medicine. If you need to have your gallbladder removed or you need to have hernia surgery or major surgery, then you go to the hospital. There's really no reason to, to even go to a hospital or go see a doctor if you're not sick. <laughs> And what people don't understand is with Rockefeller Medicine, they actually use um, petrochemicals. And this is all um, basically preventative medicine. They say, well, if you were going to have a heart attack, you might want to be in the middle of taking one of our pills because more than likely there's a percentage somewhere existing out there that says... That you might not, you know, get the ill effects of a heart attack or whatever it is, high blood pressure. Um, guys, really? <laughs> Are you really buying into this? So in case you don't know, I live out in Los Angeles. I'm a writer. My writing's always linked in the description. I'm writing Linoleum Blown Apart. And what Linoleum Blown Apart is about, it's basically about me. It's about a kid who uh, plays in a punk rock band and he gets the name of his band from a Kubrickian filmmaker who's more Kubrick than Kubrick. Why? Because he made a film called Bonaparte Bonami, and that was the reason why Kubrick didn't make Napoleon. Okay? So there's another clue for you from Linoleum Blown Apart. I'll be doing another episode uh, really soon. Don't forget, don't blame the DEI hire. Just know that it's part of a process that we're in and that they're accelerating us into a future that they're trying to say that we don't have any control over. Uh, I say take back control, keep the lines of communication open, and thank you very much for watching my show. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know.